Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the ligaments around the proximal and the distal radio ulna joint. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as I post biomechanics videos of all the joint and you can check it out in the playlist. You can also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of all my notes and post some MCQs. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to talk about your radio ulnar ligaments and first we will talk about the proximal and the next slide will be about the distal radio ulnar ligaments okay so first starting with your annular ligament it's not shown over here but it goes it encircles around your radial head like this and then it is lined by your articular cartilage from inside so that your radius can spin right that it forms some part of your articulating surface if you want to know more about this ligament, you can check out my video under the articulation of your radio ulnar joint where you will get more in-depth knowledge about this. I'll link it over here at the top. But apart from this, it also blends with your joint capsule which is coming from top. So proximally it blends over there and then laterally on lateral side it blends with your lateral collateral ligament. So that is your annular ligament. Now next going to the quadrate ligament. Its attachment, as you can see over here, it goes horizontal, right, like this. So the inferior edge of radial notch of your ulna, that is on this side, and then it goes, and this is the head and the neck, right? So neck of the radius is where it attaches. It has few functions. So first one is it maintains the position of radial head and the radial notch, right? So radial notch is over here and the radial head. So this position is maintained by your quadrate ligament. It also limits the spin of the radius during supination and pronation. So as you know, during supination pronation movement, the radial head spins inside the annular ligament and also over the capitulum and this spin is limited by your quadrate ligament. And then it also reinforces the inferior aspect of your capsule which is coming from top, right? So those are the main function of your quadrate ligament. Moving on to the third ligament that is the oblique cord. It is a flat facial band. You can see over here this one. And what is its attachment? From the inferior aspect of your radial notch, right? This is the radial notch on the side. So inferior aspect of radial notch and goes down to your bicipital tuberosity. Now, if you can see it is exactly perpendicular to your interosseous membrane which is present over here. So it is exactly perpendicular and they say that it might help in preventing the separation of two bones that is the radius and ulna. So those are the three major ligaments that we have and apart from that the, between the two bones there is also this interosseous membrane which helps stabilize both proximal as well as the distal radio ulna joint. So this we will be going to talk about in the next slide. So let's move forward to your distal radio ulna joint. So under our distal radio ulnar joint, we have our dorsal and palmar radio ulnar ligaments. So these are the ligaments. And then we are going to talk about the interosseous membrane, which is divided into central band, membranous portion and dorsal oblique cord, which is different compared to your oblique cord that we saw previously, right? So first let us look at the dorsal and palmar radio ulnar ligaments. So if you can see this picture, this is the distal radio ulnar joint in supination, neutral and pronation position. So this is your radius and this is the ulna, right? And this curve that you can see over here is the ulnar notch. And the ulnar notch has a dorsal part and a palmar part. So from the dorsal aspect of your ulnar notch, dorsal radio ulnar ligament comes and from the palmar aspect, the palmar radio ulnar ligament comes. And both of them go and meet over here at the fovea and the styloid process, the base of the styloid process of ulna. So that is its attachment. So, so that's what I mentioned here, the dorsal and the palmar aspect of the ulnar notch of the radius and then inserts into the ulnar fovea and the base of the styloid process of your ulna. And if you have a look over here, during supination, the dorsal side becomes lax and the other side is taut and in pronation 
palmar side is legs and the other side is tot so that is something that is seen in your dorsal and palmar radio ulnar ligament now let's move on to the interosseous membrane so interosseous membrane has a central band which is really strong thick and ligamentous or tendinous in structure in comparison to your membranous portion that it has which is more on the softer side and thinner side the orientation of central band is such that it goes obliquely from your radius to ulna i couldn't get a really good picture to demonstrate these attachments but this is the best that we have over here and another point to know is it is high in collagen that makes it very strong and similar to the central band's attachment the membranous portion of your interosseous membrane is also adjacent to your central band so these kind of go hand in hand but they are slightly different structurally which is strong and ligamentous and this is more of soft and membranous and then we have the third part that is the dorsal oblique cord and this has a different attachment it goes from proximal quarter of your ulna to mid region of the radius again we don't have the best diagrams to demonstrate it but you will get some idea with this and the orientation which is very important of your dorsal oblique cord is exactly opposite to your central band okay it runs counter to your central band so these are the main fibers of your interosseous membrane now let's look at the function of it so i mentioned just some of the function over here so first thing is it maintains the space between your radius and ulna it also basically distributes load between your proximal and distal radio ulna joint so how does it do it so one is it transfers some of the compressive loads to your distal radius and protects the proximal radio ulna joint so if you have noticed your proximal ulna is pretty big and radius is pretty small and other way goes the radius is pretty big and ulna is really small so this so when there is lot of forces on your proximal side these will be distributed to your distal radius and same thing if there is a lot of load on the distal side these will be distributed to the other side right so that's what i mentioned here so during the compressive load transfer it maintains some amount of transfer stability between your radius and ulna and also this phenomena was specifically seen that when axial force was present on your radio ulna joint with supination your ulna was taking a lot of load in comparison to your pronation where radius was taking lot of load so basically different position of your wrist and elbow will distribute the loads on different bones as well as different bands or different cords of your interosseous membrane for example when your radius and ulna or your forearm or wrist is in neutral position the central band is loaded the most whereas when your forearm is in supination in any degree of elbow flexion or extension the loads are seen to be really high so with that we finish off the topic now let's quickly summarize so first we saw our proximal radio ulna joint where we saw annular ligament oblique cord and quadrate ligament the annular ligament provides a good articulation for your radius the quadrate prevents the excessive spin and the oblique cord it prevents the both bones separating from each other then we moved to the distal radio ulna joint so under distal radio ulna joint we saw our dorsal and palmar radio ulna ligaments and then we moved to interosseous membrane which had three parts the central band membranous portion and dorsal cord and their function was to basically stabilize your proximal and distal radio ulna joint and distribute forces among them so with that we finish off this topic next video we will look at the muscles around the radio ulna joint so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching